All right. This is APC 2011, uh, question number one. Uh, pardon me because I do not have my stylus with me, so going to be a little bit me uh, mess here this time. All right. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward question. Um, so they want us to come up with an equation for uh, the time for the projectile to go along the length of this launching device. If you look at the given information, they tell us basically all this stuff. And the thing that comes into mind is this. When I'm thinking about time, I want to use the impulse. And remember that impulse is equal to force F net times T. Moving things around and you end up getting JP divided by F AVG. Easiest two points ever. One point for the equation, one point for the answer. Now there, uh, they said that there's another uh, alternate ways of doing this, but honestly, this is the quickest and easiest one. All right, now they want to know what is the mass of the projectile. Well, again, they gave us the whole impulse, so I kind of want to continue with that. Remember, impulse is equal to m delta v. So mass is just J divided by change in velocity, or J divided by VF minus V0. Uh, in this case, the object, um, oh, I think it's, uh, I think we're supposed to assume that it starts at rest, that initially this object was at rest, so it's just JP divided by VX. And that's it. That's it for that one. Again, easiest two points. One point for the answer, one point for the equation. Uh, this one. All right, now for this part, they want to know, derive an expression for the work done in stopping the projectile. All right, well, there's a few different ways to go about this. You could think of work as being equal to FD. Um, though you have to be careful because of the fact that this force technically changes as a function of distance, so you'd have to see how it changes. Uh, the easiest, other easy one is just to know that the work is done to change the kinetic energy of the object. Now this is actually, um, this is actual, this is an actual theorem, it's called the, um, I want to say it's called the work energy theorem, but it's something like that. Basically saying that whatever work you put in is going into as um, a change in kinetic. And you might be thinking, oh, well, what about potential? Technically, potential is just the work done by gravity, um, but that's either near or there. So when you're looking for work, try to uh, think about changing kinetic energy because this is by far the easiest. So... We have in the final minus initial, but the initial is zero. So it just ends up being one half mv x squared. Remember that the mass we had just gotten before as being jp over vx. So I get that the work is equal to one half JP VX. And this one was three points. So one point for the answer. Oh, um, sorry. Not done yet because um, the work in stopping the projectile should be negative. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, I think I read that wrong. So technically, if this is the work done to stop the object, then it should be uh, it's still k minus k zero, but the final kinetic energy is zero. So then we just got negative here, negative there. All right. So you get one point for the negative, one point for realizing that the work was done to go into kinetic energy, and one point in substituting in the mass from the previous part. So those are your three points. 
Now you notice I made the mistake of not actually reading the question fully. So you want to make sure that you actually read the question. Um, all right. Moving on. Driving expression for the average force exerted on the projectile as it comes to rest in the block. All right, so it hits into the block, comes to rest, and, um, well, average force, F. This is where you want to actually use work equals FD. In the previous part, you didn't actually know what the force was, so you'd actually, you had to find that out. It made the whole problem much longer if you used it before. Here, though, it makes a lot more sense. So you do force equals work over distance. We already know what the di uh, work was. It was um, 1 half JP over VX divided by distance. So the force needed to stop this block would end up being JP VX 2D. Uh, that P is supposed to be subscript P. Looked a little bit big. And again, two points. One point for the answer. And one point for basically using this equation, plug it in properly. You should start noticing the pattern now after so many uh, APs of where the points are coming from and, and all that stuff and how to actually gain the point. Alright, uh, so now, let's see this. Alright, so what they have in this case is uh, when they hit into the block, the block basically moves before coming to rest. So, so this one's a little bit different. So basically, we're going to end up having um, the kinetic energy of the object um, is going to equal the work done by the block plus the work done by friction to slow it down. Um, yeah, um, so that's going to be the one half mvx squared. They're looking for the distance that it comes to stop in the block, so that's basically tied with this. So then we have the fb times dn plus FF, oh wait, uh, sorry, they gave us the frictional force. So, FT, D, um, let's see, I'm not allowed to use VX or M from before, so I think I have to substitute in, um, Oh wait, uh, if you recall back from before, that kinetic energy was equal to um, the FB times D, the original distance that it stopped. So instead of doing the one half MV squared like this, I can actually use FB times the original distance equals FB times the new distance plus FT times D. As I said, I'm a little bit messy here, so forgive me. Starting from back up here, FB times D minus FT D equals FB DN. DN equals, divide that FB over, D minus Ft, Fb times D. Alright, so that, that's your answer. Um, you got one point for basically doing this. Realizing that 
the one half MV that the original kinetic energy was just equal to the original work from the previous part. Um, you got one point for figuring out what the work done by friction was. So going from here to here. You got one point for including the work done by the block. Um, and I think you get one point for realizing this, that the kinetic energy is being turned into work done by both objects. And that's basically it. So that was a four point question. Um, yep. And the last one, it wants to know, um, derive an expression for dn in terms of d and the mass of the projectile and the mass of the block. All right, so... All right, well, we have a, the projectile colliding in with the block and sticking into it. So we can actually figure out what the speed of the object is after the collision by doing, um, where is it? All right, so this was the initial velocity Vx. And that's the final velocity v. And so we end up getting that the final velocity v is just equal to m, m plus m times uh, vx. And then if you, so now since we're talking about the, the bullet and the block and its speed, since we know what its speed is, well, we can then talk about how long it takes. Um, when it comes to rest due to friction and just use k equals wf so the kinetic energy that the two objects have being lost to friction and what do we have um, kinetic energy is one half of mv squared All right, I'm just going to skip a step right now because I don't really have a whole lot of room. All right, now I'm going to do another trick. If you notice, I have a, a half, I have an m, and I have a vx squared. I could do the exact same trick I did before and basically say that the one half m squared blah 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 is really just this times uh, f b d. All right. Um, like I said, this is from uh, remembering that f b d is just one half little m v x squared. All right. Um, Now, let's see, we have this whole setup. Now we have to kind of use this in from the previous part. So if you recall from E, we had the equation FB DN equals FB D. Oh wait, um, now what was the equation? Because we had it much, uh, much more simplified before when we solved it. It was, all right, can't erase that. It's um, dn equals d minus ft d over fb. I can basically plug this stuff in, all that. into there and you'll get an answer that looks like dn equals d minus again I'm skipping steps because I don't have a whole lot of room oh wait uh, sorry, that D was supposed to get taken out. 
So there is no second day. Um, and if you want to simplify that a little bit more, you would get d1 minus m over m plus m. And if you want to simplify that a little bit more, I think you could get it down to here. Uh, let's see. But either of those two lines would uh, be the correct answer. Again, forgive me for being so messy, but it's the best that I could do without a stylus. All right. Now, this one was actually, despite all the steps, this was actually worth two points. So this is actually a good thing because if you didn't know what you were doing, at least you, got, you only lost two points. So you got one point for doing conservation momentum. Um, and then you got one point for doing kinetic energy and plugging in the V into this equation that you got from the momentum. And that's basically it. That's uh, this whole problem. Uh, for the most part, pretty straightforward, but you should start getting to the habit from this problem of realizing when you're supposed to do what energies uh, set equal to other types of energies and things like that. So... Definitely uh, practice these problems. Make sure you understand uh, the method and the reasoning behind everything that I did for this. If you have any questions, let me know as soon as possible.